All right, coming to you live from Austin, Texas, and OSCON. I'm here with Richard Mortier of Docker. Richard, how are you? Not too bad, thank you. So, let's talk unikernels. Uh, you gave a talk yesterday. It was unikernel related. Let's start out with the basics. What's a unikernel? So, I guess a unikernel is a way of building software um, where instead of assuming that you're going to be running your program on top of uh, some large operating system kernel such as Linux, uh, instead you break down that kernel into lots of little libraries representing the different services it provides and then you link in just exactly those services that you need into your application. So what comes out is an application that's got all its system services kind of bound up within it. Um, when you make the sort of the final step to actually do the final link of that, you can then target that application for different uh, backends. So you might turn that into a, a Zen virtual machine image, you might turn it into a Unix process, you might turn it into... Um, we have examples where we've turned that into using JavaScript uh, into an application that will run in the web browser. So when people hear the way that you're describing it, they might think, how is this different if there are neophytes? How is this different? Or maybe people like myself. How is this different than containers? Okay, so I guess it's something on the same kind of continuum as, con as containers, It's sort of, uh, but even more so. So in a container, I guess you're, you're assuming that you're going to pull in the environment, you, you, you contain the environment inside the container that the application that you want to run in the container is going to rely upon. Um, but inside the container, you're still looking at separate processes, often mapped onto Linux, or nowadays maybe mapped onto Windows, um, and you still have that sort of that, that boundary between a kernel of some kind, an operating system, and then the user space applications you're running. In a unikernel, everything's kind of bound even more tightly together. So you've got your application code is actually linked against, statically linked against the libraries that provide the system services it, it requires. So to take a particular example, the Mirage OS uh, unikernel system is one of about a dozen or so that, that are currently being collated on uh, unikernel.org website. Um, the Mirage system uh, has a number of um, libraries that provide a TCP stack, for example, a TLS stack that provide uh, raw networking uh, access, that provide file system access. And so when you write a unikernel in the Mirage system, you declare what the, which of those services you need. And then when you do the final compile and link step, um, it links in those things that you need. So if you don't need a file system, you don't get any file system code linked into your image. The other effect of that is that you then have your application is now a single address space. You can think of it as a single, single address space operating system image. So application code, system code is all running in the same address space. So there's no boundary between those anymore, which has implications for, for performance. So now Docker recently uh, acquired a company that, that does or, or performs in the unikernel space. What is Docker's relationship or how is Docker focusing on uh, unikernels? Where, how are you positioning it? Um, so I would say that the, the positioning at the moment is really, it's about increasing the diversity of the things that you can do with Docker. Um, so it's, it's kind of, it's, um, as I said, it's not that, I, at least from my point of view, I wouldn't see that unikernels are going to replace uh, everything that you currently do with containers, or that they're going to augment it. So uh, with the example I gave in the talk I gave for OzCon yesterday, um, we have uh, a website for one of the uh, university projects I'm involved in, which is a standard media wiki site. So that's currently running as a set of containers on the Docker cloud. Um, so that's a, there's a container that's got Apache and Media, media Wiki in to serve the content, and then there's a container that's got MySQL in it that actually has the content for the, the Media Wiki site. And what we've did, what we've done is we've augmented that with two more containers, um, which are actually mappings of unikernels, the Mirage unikernels, into containers directly. And so we can manage those using Docker. And those two, those two unikernels, one of them provides a very simple service that, sim that just redirects HTTP to HTTPS accesses. So we force everybody to go through the HTTPS version of the site. The second one uh, uses a clean room implementation of TLS that was carried out for the Mirage project, um, which is very much smaller and would appear to not be vulnerable to bugs such as Heartbleed, um, and the Heartbleed, Heartbleed classes of bu bugs. Um, as the TLS endpoint, so we're not relying on OpenSSL open or some such inside the container that's running Apache to provide TLS support. We've got this cleanroom implementation that sits in a separate container as a unikernel, sits outside that and can handle all the external accesses. Um, and so only once traffic has gone through that endpoint is it then able to get into the uh, sort of more legacy elements of that distribution uh, into, into Apache and then into the MediaWiki PHP itself. Awesome. Richard Mortier, thank you so much. Okay, thank you.